Hello everybody, welcome to today's reflection. I hope that you're doing well, I hope that you're looking after yourself and I hope that you are keeping well and looking after your family. Uh, today's reflection is from the Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 6 from verses 37 to 38. Let's hear the reading of God's word. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put onto your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Brothers and sisters, we have some good words here. We have judge, we have condemn, we have forgive, and we have give. Then there is a little word called it, I-T, it. Now, uh, we uh, do a lot of judging in our day-to-day -day lives. In fact, if we didn't judge, we can't go about our normal day-to-day -day business. So we are doing a lot of judging as we go along in our days. But the question I want to ask you is this. Are you judging correctly or are you judging wrongly? Are you judging negatively or are you judging positively? Because if you are judging negatively, then that will lead to condemnation. Then you will condemn. If you are judging positively, then it will not lead, lead to condemnation. It will lead to encouragement and uplifting. A lot of the time we judge negatively. In fact, the word prejudice includes judging. It means you are prejudging somebody. Brothers and sisters, I will encourage you that when you meet somebody new, when you meet somebody fresh, when you encounter somebody who you don't know or something that is alien to you, I want you to carefully judge that positively. Because if you judge correctly and if you judge positively, it will not lead to condemnation. Judge not and you will not be judged. We are being told here that if we judge, then we will be judged. So if you are judging negatively, that same negative judging will be coming to you. If you are judging positively, that same positive judging will be coming to you. So when you meet new people, when you encounter new environment, when you encounter a new home, when you encounter a new job, marriage, when you have a baby, I want you to judge correctly, judge positively. Because with the same judge that you will use to judge, that same judge will be used to judge back to you. Judge not and you will not be judged. The second word we are told here is condemn. Condemn not and you will not be condemned. Brothers and sisters, I want to draw your attention to this word, condemn. Be careful not to be quick to condemn. Be careful not to be quick to write people off. Be careful not to be quick that people will not make it in life. People will amount to nothing. I found this a lot in schools. For something that a teacher will do to a child, it can destroy their, their entire life. For, for a single word that a teacher will say to a child in school. So when you are speaking to somebody, when you are speaking to your child, when you are speaking to your friend, be sure to encourage rather than condemning. When you encourage, they will flourish and they will blossom. Don't condemn. It is not in your place to condemn. The only person who can condemn is, is God Almighty. God is the judge of all life and he is the one that can condemn the humanity. We are not supposed to condemn people. We are supposed to encourage and build people up.
Speak positive words into the people around, around us. Speak positive words into your partner's life. Speak positive words into your children's life. Speak positive words into your friend's life. Speak positive words into your colleagues in, and, in, and in the workplace. Be positive in your thinking. When you do that, you will not condemn people. The other day I was talking about a gift. If you know the gift that you have, then that will allow you not to condemn people. If you know that you are skillful in a particular area of expertise, then that will make you appreciate people and that will stop you from judging people and condemning people. We are also told here that forgive and you will be forgiven. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, this is, the, this is the tough one among all of them. Forgiveness is, is very tough among society. Forgiveness is very difficult for some people. But brothers and sisters, we are told here that if you do not forgive, then you will not be forgiven. It's as simple as that. In fact, we pray in the Lord's Prayer that forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. So brothers and sisters, if you cannot forgive, how do you expect God to forgive you? We are told here that forgive and you will be forgiven. I want to say to you that forgiveness takes time. Now, if the forgive, unforgiveness in your heart is over 5 years or 10 years or 20 years, then I want to say shame unto you. I say that because you are actually harming yourself rather than the person you are struggling to forgive. If you forgive yourself, if you forgive the person, you will lift a burden off your shoulder. In fact, if you try it, try and say out loud that first of all, you have committed a sin by keeping that unforgiveness in your heart and say to God that you are releasing that person. Say to God that God, I forgive this person or th that person. I forgive them from my heart. If you try that, you will realize that from the moment you say that, a burden will be lifted off your shoulder. Remember that if you don't forgive, you will not be forgiven. We are forgiven by God because we, we also have to forgive the people who trespass against us. Forgiveness, I know, is difficult. It has happened to me. It took time, but I forgave. When you forgive, you open doors of opportunity for yourself and for your family and for your partner and for your children. Unforgiveness is not good. Forgive and you will be forgiven. The progression is simple. Judge not that you will not be judged. Condemn not and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Brothers and sisters, try and forgive. Pray to God. Whatever it is that has happened, bring it in prayer to God and say to God, use this particular test of scripture. Luke chapter 6 from verse 37 to 38. Read that out loud and pray to God and say to God that you forgive whatever wrong that has been done to you. Say to God that you forgive that person. You forgive that institution and you will begin to have a happy life. You will begin to have a prosperous life. You will begin to have a successful life because you forgive. Forgive and you will be forgiven. The last two words are give and it will be given to you. Give and it will be given to you. So it's two words. Give and it will be given to you. Brothers and sisters, whatever it is that you are giving, that is the same thing that you will get. Because we are told here that give and it will be given to you. So the small letter word, two letter word there is it. So whatever it is that you are giving, if you are giving love, you will, you will get love back. If you are giving hatred, you will get hatred back. If you are giving condemnation, you will, get, you will get condemnation back. If you are giving judging, if you are judging people wrongly, you will be judged wrongly. If you are giving cheerfulness, you will get cheerfulness back. If you are blessing people, you will, you will get blessing back. Whatever it is that you are giving, that will be given back to you. And in fact, we are told that it will be given back to you good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, 
will men give to your bosom? Brothers and sisters, judge not and you will not be judged. Condemn not and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. I want to say to my parishness that it is a wonderful season for the parish of St. Lawrence and all saints. Our new website is now ready. It's in the comment below. If you click on the website, it will take you to our new web page. On there, we now have a donation button. So for all of the parishioners who have been wanting to give, for those of you since the lockdown, since we were told not to go to church again, the money that we will normally put in the collection plate, I have asked you to put it in a plate and put it somewhere in your house. Now we have the opportunity to come on our website and click the donation button and make that contribution to our church finances. I want to thank everybody who have already been given and been given generously. We are told here that give and it will be given to you. So as you give, God will replenish you. God will supply back to you. God will bless you back. God will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Now we have a donation button on our website. Please may I encourage you to click the link below. When you click the link below, it will take you to our website. When you get on our web page, you will see the donation button on there. Click on that donation button and you can make your donation. From when we were asked to shut the church, you have been putting your contribution in a plate in your house because I asked you to do that. Now you can do that contribution online into our church finances. I want to thank you for giving to our church. I want to thank you for giving for the church to grow and for the propagation of the kingdom of God in the Eastwood area and in the South End area. Brothers and sisters, today I came to encourage you. Don't judge. Judge not that you will not be judged. Condemn not that you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall people give to you and shall God give to you. Brothers and sisters, may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. As you live in the blessings of God, as you live in the abundance of God, as you live in the grace of God, as you live in the favor of God, may the blessings of God that make it rich and add no sorrow be your portion. I pray that God will protect you. I pray that God will protect everything that concerns you. I plead the blood of Jesus over your life. I plead the blood of Jesus over your children. I plead the blood of Jesus over your spouses. And I pray and decree that nothing shall by any means harm you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This coming Thursday, the Reverend Mark James will be bringing our midweek Holy Communion to us. So tune in on Thursday and join in with the service as our lovely Reverend Mark James brings the service, the midweek service to us. So I will see you on Thursday as we worship the Lord together. God bless. Shalom. Peace. <laughs>